Good afternoon. Welcome back to the B&H event space. Today, you are tuned into the most versatile and valuable lens I own. Not me. This guy, <laughs> so, Sony artisan of imagery, Chris Orwig, joining us once again. A huge thank you to Sony for hosting today's event. Chris, I don't know how long it's going to take you to spill the beans. I kind of le I left the, the lens out of the title. I wanted yeah, people yeah, to yeah, think yeah, about yeah. this. I wanted them to yes. think about what they think of when they think versatile yes. and valuable. I want them to think about what is versatile and valuable to them. So good to have you back, man. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's been a bit. It's so good. I, I, I think one of my favorite things is just getting to hang out with you. So I love that and everyone tuning in. Thank you. And let me jump into my slides just to just to get it rolling and then we'll, we'll talk as we go. But um, I think I think it's um, kind of a fun way just to kick it off. And the idea behind this one is I was thinking about lenses and all this stuff. And I realized that my real moneymaker, the one I use the most frequently, the one that has helped me most of my career, all these things is this lens. And I have a ton of gear, <laughs> like a lot of photographers behind me, you can't really see it, but I have this whole like drawer system full of lenses. So more than all this you see on the screen, but, but this one I'm singling out today. And this is the particular lens that I use. It's actually the GM2, I don't have the two on there, but if you aren't a Sony shooter, it doesn't matter. This talk isn't about Sony, this talk is about this focal length and why this focal length can be so helpful to us as photographers. And for me, it's helpful because I can photograph an astronaut, in this case, in the uh, replica of the International Space Station in Germany, where he's doing some training, or a band um, doing some album art um, photography, which Derek, you and I were just talking about. We'll have to loop back to that. Um, but um, I can photograph them out at a cool location, or then the next day I can photograph their show and I'm using the same exact lens. And that's what I mean by versatile is that it can go so many different places and do so many different things. In this case, a yoga teacher in the town where I live in this cool old building or way up in the mountains in Oregon. and. I was actually just photographing the reflection and these two people and their little dog. I don't know if you can see their dog in the red canoe, but started to paddle by, asked if I could take a photo and they said, of course, but so outdoor adventure stuff. Um, in this case, this is a friend's painting. And so when I'm doing art reproduction, just for fun, for a friend, this is the lens that I'm going to use. Um, this is one of the masterminds behind the Sony cameras. This guy is like full, amazing person at Sony and to get a cool portrait of him because I do shoot Sony and these cameras mean so much to me. So a portrait in this case, um, up in the mountains in Utah, or sometimes when I'm on a shoot at a beautiful location, I just like to photograph things like clouds in this case, some mountains, but a lot of clouds and just capture the feeling of a place or other times I'm hired in this case by the grandma in the middle to photograph her and all of her family over holidays. Um, and to try to fit everyone into the frame or a famous baseball player up close, or um, in this case, he's in, in, in his van. In this case, he's in, standing outside of his van. So, so this is the versatility, right? <laughs> There's like, I can do all my up close stuff. And then I can also do my environmental portrait work as well, as well as so many other kinds of things, whether it's commercial photography in Costa Rica, this is celebrity. Um, and in this case, you know, the up close portrait on the left, uh, celebrity with product and then celebrity with fa her fans. And so it's kind of crazy to me because I was digging through all my gear and I was like, this is crazy to me that I can just have one lens on my camera and literally, you know, one minute do that photo on the left, a couple minutes later, that one. And then she went outside and a couple minutes later, this one. So the, the fact that we can do those things is so huge or in another case, and I've shared this photo before, but a wedding in Yosemite, this was at sunrise. So that photo, this was later during, after the ceremony with her parents, they used this for their Christmas card, kind of just a clean, natural, you know, nice photo. It's not like this to me is more like art. This is more like this is getting the job done. Um, and then later at sunset up at Taft Point, there they are out on the point from a distance with this lens. There they are up a little bit closer and then still closer still. So the fact that it allows us to do these different things, and I'll talk 
a little bit about why this isn't just going to be like showing images. <laughs> this is going to be deconstructing this a little bit. Um, but I wanted to start with images to start to give you some ideas behind the statement that I'm throwing out there, which is a lens that is literally the most versatile, the most valuable one. It, it, it is the one that kind of has gotten me the furthest in my career in, in a certain way. So a little bit about me, then I'll pause. Derek and I will talk, then we'll jump back to slides. But I love photography. I love that it gets you places. And these are just some goofy photos of myself out in the sand dunes from a project I was working on or up um, in the mountains, in the ocean, in the studio, um, and then having fun and enjoying and appreciating life and then a photo a friend captured of our family and our golden retriever as a side note we currently have 12 dogs in our house um, two of them are adults and 10 of them are puppies <laughs> we have 10 golden retriever puppies right now um, but uh, that's another story i have a, my most recent book is authentic portraits so i do a lot of portraiture I have courses at this URL. This particular one's on sale right now for 15 bucks. It's on posing. So if you're kind of liking some of the style you're seeing, that could be a resource for you. And then of course my website, you can see some of the work that I do. And just looking at this page, now that you know a little bit about this focal length, you're seeing a lot of the photos on this. I'm gonna say, way more than half probably 70 percent were captured with that focal length lens which i didn't totally realize until i dug into um, this talk so let me pause right there let me stop sharing the screen um, and let's talk a little bit derek what is coming up for you as i do this really quick you know jam session with the 24 to 70 what questions what thoughts what reflections if not the 24 to 70, okay. what's the other, what's the yeah. other go-to? Okay. So that's a good question. I brought, I, 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 I uh, have a bunch of, some of my cameras here. So, and just to give a sense on, um, cause I think it's always interesting to see in real life, not just the pictures, but I, I opened my camera door and I was like, what are on my cameras? You know, and they they tend to be on my cameras a lot. So this one right here is the 24 to 70. Um, and then this one is the 85. And so you can, those are, those are really, if I only have two lenses and a shoot, the, these are the two. And you can kind of see their form factor, um, you know, similar, yeah. obviously, obviously different, but not, not huge. And then maybe to compare that to the other one, which um, for video a lot, I'll shoot with the Sony A1 and the 35. And so that's a much smaller compact lens. And these are all the G Master lenses. Those are what I tend to use. So yeah, so if not the 24 to 70, and I'll talk about this in another presentation, the 85. The 85 is really, really magic. So I'd say that's the most magical lens. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, But I would say the 24 to 70 is really the one, I'll show some photos later, that just has such versatility. So like, there's a lot of photos in that set that I just showed. I couldn't create with the 85 because I just couldn't back up enough or the working distance would be a little too awkward. Um, and so the fact that it allows for this wide, not too wide, but also up close, but not too up close. It's a very natural look. Some people call it kind of a workhorse lens. I don't, I don't mm. like that phrase. Um, or, or you'll see it listed as a standard zoom lens. I don't like that either because it makes it seem like this is standard for me. Run it's a freaking, it's magic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think what shifted for me, I had a friend who was, this was years ago, who assisted for Annie Leibovitz. This is probably 10 or 15 years ago. And she was shooting at the time. I don't know what she shoots now, but then with a 24 to 70 a lot. And I started to say like, oh, because I kind of overlooked that lens. I didn't want standard. I wanted primes. You know, at the time I was like 35 prime, 50 prime, 85 prime, give me primes and I'm happy. Then I started experimenting with this. And then when this, the Sony came out with their version one, which amazing lens and then the version two blew me away even further. I just have started to realize like this is 
the golden ticket. <laughs> and it's not like a workhorse, I guess for me, it sounds like a horse that's like, it's not a race horse, right? It's like, well, this is gonna like pull hay or something and it's not really that great of a horse, but it will get the job done. And it's like, no, do not think of the 24 to 70 focal length. And again, it doesn't matter about the brand right now, focal length. Because what standard is saying, at least to me, and it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts is like, what it's saying is like, this is just, um, what's a good analogy? I don't, I'm, I'm average I'm run of the mill. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we yeah. equate it to like a kit lens that doesn't yes. really offer anything of value. Right. But most kit lenses, interesting would be more like a 24 to 105, yeah. which, or, or they have like too far of a range. And, and those are kind of like, um, they're kind of like an El Camino, like, you know, those old trucks that are half car, half truck. Yeah, they're not, they're not either like a car, they're not a truck. You're like, and it's like, the you know, ultimate what? surfer car. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, they, they are old school. But yeah. I'm like, you want something that, you, at least for me with my zoom ranges, I don't like mm -hmm. zoom ranges that cover too much ground. I want something to be what it is and to be it well. 24 to 70 mm -hmm. does that. It's, it's wide, but not too wide does that really, really well. Everything in between does really well up the 70 really well. Cause otherwise you just get a little lazy of like, jut, 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 jut. and yeah. for me, I want to engage and move and walk around and change my perspective. So I like, I that. agree. I think the versatility part is the main thing for me Yeah, that you, you need to have range. It's one lens. You can carry around essentially one lens Yeah, and it, it's obviously going to do better on the wider end. You're not going to go much. Most people on a full frame sensor are not going to need to go much wider than 24 for right. most things. Yes. The longer end of it is where you'd be like, okay, well, I can't really get crazy compression. Yeah. But I can, I mean, I'm, look, I'm using the version one. Let's see. Okay. Oh, that is it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's your can, up close I shot. Can, That's great. I can, I can yeah. still get yeah. separation. I mean, look at the, the quality. Yeah, Looks clean. And nice. you get, we have something in the foreground, something in the background. I don't know if you guys yeah. can hear me that great, yeah. but yeah, I can hear you. Good. Um, that just well. kind of shows you how versatile, how versatile you can get with this lens. And, because I think a lot, when you went to the 85, I was really curious. I, yeah. I knew in my head. You knew. And I know you, I'm like, <laughs> it's going to be, the, because I know you think that lens is, is yeah. magical, that, that yeah. focal length, that everything yeah. about it. And it is. And that's the one th you, you lose, like you just, you don't get the magic at the, yes. the portrait end of this. Yes. But it's still not, it's still not a, a slouch by any oh, regard. Oh, man, no, no. And, and I think commercially, like if I had to do a job, an all full day job or multi-day job, like I think one of my last jobs was like three days in Costa Rica and it was, you know, sunrise to midnight practically every day shooting i i did most of the job with a 24 to 70 if not i did 90 percent of the job with that i could have done the whole job with that and that's crazy we're like you couldn't do the whole job with 85 or 35 or 24 you know like mm -hmm. it, you just you would be wanting something so this one really gives you that so let me jump back to slides yeah. and then totally. and, you know i love my slides <laughs> um but I, I, I love just, I'm like visual, I think visual learner. So I'm kind of a visual person. So the, on the 24 side, to your point, I actually don't remember exactly what focal length I had this one at. It was, it wasn't 24. I'm probably more around 35, 40 or something. I'm zooming in a little bit to kind of crop in the scene, but it gives just a really nice, clean, natural look. This is shooting from a helicopter. This is at 24 and we're close to the island. And so you get a little bit of that distortion feeling. Um, this is um, at 70 and this is in Italy, just from some steps looking down at the Ponte Vecchio. This is same thing at 70 steps. And this is a different time of day, of course, but um, you, you get in some of that, you, you, it gets you there. It's not gonna like get you into, I don't know, like the very top of the steeple if you wanted that shot. like there is a limitation of how close it's going to bring you, but it's going to, it, for me, it really makes me feel like I'm there. So you feel this presence, like we're here in this moment, we're in front of this person. In this case, 
this image often I use as illustration of front light and backlight. We're in this abandoned bank in Brooklyn, but this is front light. And then I walk, oh, actually I don't have the other image, but I walk around the other side and showed backlight. But you get this sense of like, we're there with this family. We're right there with the family. We're in the grass with them. And so for me, when I think about lenses and, and things, there's there's all like the laundry list of stuff and you can look these up, you know, and someone will say there's great image quality and there's all this, you know, all the little details on that, the aperture is 2.8 or autofocus, whatever. All that stuff is important. But if it basically in Sony world, if it ha if it's G Master, it's absolutely amazing. So, so all those things are there. So that doesn't really sell me on the lens because I'm like, I expect like top quality, so to speak. But what does sell me is thinking about other qualities so so these are them for me and this is a little bit different like my gear review isn't super technical based like yes technical top of the line great but then i want to know is it something else in this lens it's authentic it gives you a real natural feel it feels very honest so whenever i pull it out i'm just like yeah i'm here this is a moment i'm present i'm engaged Versus when I pull out my 100 to 400 and I crank it up to 400, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, it's really exciting. But in contrast, this lens is very honest. It's creative. It's kind of like, huh, what else can I do? It's inviting in that way. It's kind, it's warm, it's thoughtful. It's a storytelling lens. So I think rather than standard, I think if you, if you like telling stories, 24 to 70 focal length is the, the storytelling focal length because it's like in cinematography you can get the establishing shot the medium shot the up close shot you can really move with your feet you can work in unique ways and then it's just really really reliable so what i mean is like um i don't know like let's say i'm super tired and i just i'm not like i'm my a game i'm not composing well i know the lens will help me out like I can't go wrong with this lens. It's so reliable um, with in that way. And to illustrate that, this is one photo and I've shared these before, but this is this has those feelings, right? It's honest, it's authentic, it's natural. We feel we feel close to the to the scene and to what's happening. We don't see or feel any distortion, even though we're shooting this really wide but the wideness isn't like silly or goofy or exciting. It just has this good natural vibe. Again, another up close photo. This is a family friend and her dog. I was doing some senior photos of her. And, um, this was such a fun photo. I love this photo. And later their dog passed away and she got her dog's name tattooed on her arm. And I printed this for her and she has this in her college dorm, but it just has this really nice, warm feel and, and there's a there's a closeness and intimacy to having a little bit of a wider lens like this and but it doesn't do so in a exaggerated or over the top way so is this always a perfect lens obviously not so let me just show two pictures this is the my backyard so if i were to just step out of my little cabin here this is what i we would see and this looks like today, actually, it's like very sunny out and beautiful. And we have these big oak trees. The one with the little tree house is over 150 years old. But what's interesting about this, this is at 24 with this lens. We're not seeing the full oak tree, right? Because our yard isn't that big. So I couldn't back up. I'm like backed up against the cabin here. So when you want like that really full look, this is my back childhood backyard. So different oak tree, but I love oak trees. This is at 16, right? So this is a 16 to 35, another lens I love. But can you feel how the, the tree's arms are like wrapping around? It's like immersive. So when you want like immersive wideness, at least for me, I go to something wider than 24. So the 24 to 70, couldn't create this shot. It couldn't give this kind of like immersive wrap around surround sound kind of feeling. And um, this is a tree, but this is also really applicable to architecture, um, to smaller situations, or you know, when you're up close to things, you just want to get it all. Um, in this case, I did obviously cut off some of the branches, but I climbed this tree as a kid. And but I just wanted 
I wanted the branches to go to the edge, but I want it to feel immersive. So, so it's not always perfect, right? There are other times when you want other lenses, but it is really versatile and really valuable. So I'm not saying this is the golden perfect lens, but I am saying it's valuable. So here's a little mini case study. These are some good friends and another oak tree in the background, but you can see in this case, I'm standing a little bit at a distance, shooting at 24, and I get the whole scene set. And I have you know, the f-stop modified a little bit so we can get the, the sun star in the background. Then I walk up to the family a little bit, take a couple steps, and I also zoom in. And now we get this nice up close moment with their daughter, Alina, and the two grandparents that came from Switzerland to visit. And it's just kind of a fun moment. And I probably have like flowers sticking out of my hair and stuff to try to get the kid to laugh. But it's just a nice natural moment. And then this case, this was a little bit, I think earlier actually than those two shots, but it's at 24 and I'm really, really close, like super close. Like she could reach out and almost touch the camera. So you see there is some slight distortion, but not like that 16 would give you, right? So you can still work um, really close when you want to. It's incredibly helpful when you have groups of people that you need to fit into a scene. And so in this case, bride and bridesmaids, um, it allows, you know, this is where I'm a, a little bit different. I think that it does allow for some magic up close portraiture. This is an image unretouched. I would retouch out the little like dot by the guy's head, but <laughs> this guy has the coolest eyes. Like I, I could not believe those are real. And he has this cool presence I, and the photo right after this, he's laughing. Um, so he's not always this serious, but I kind of wanted this serious intense image and this is up at the top of a mountain at a ski resort there's a concrete wall i had him walk into the shade and then i said hey what what if would you ever um walk on top of the wall so you you get a sense on the look you can get at 70 very beautiful um, and then he walked on top of the wall and then i'm shooting this now i step back a little bit a little bit wider scene and because i have this lens i know i can do those two things a um, couple more examples this one is a family friend kid in his backyard they, you can they lower their basketball hoop for him so he can slam dunk it's pretty awesome and so there he is like you know just jamming his backyard and we're kind of goofing around and then he and his brother i grab this cooler i'm like you guys sit over here and um there's a cool brother shot brothers and and i i love this this moment so so the fact again that i can do this with one lens to me is what's making it valuable yoga teacher out at the beach. Um, this is commercial work for Ghirelli chocolate. And this is like a nice kind of afternoon moment of them eating uh, ice cream and stuff. Um, but, but it has a real good kind of commercial feel, artist in a studio. This, this photo I threw in because I will do events and sometimes events you're like there's a table and people and this is like this we saw photos of her earlier out on the ocean in costa rica but this is just with some of the guests at the retreat and so this lens can do that looking at it here makes me think i i want to crop it in a little bit but <laughs> you know always always reviewing your own work this is my daughter annie um captured some senior portraits of her so again up close it's magic i'm you know you can tell i'm really close and this is her as well um, these were for her high school graduation photos. Um, and she's such a wonderful spirit, amazing person. But you get a sense of that. And part of these images, what I'm trying to show is like up close, right? The other one, a little bit more of a medium shot. And then the one on the right, it's so left medium. Then on the one on the right, um, she's smaller in the frame. So we're looking at the size the subject is taking up in the frame. And this goes back to the storytelling that this lens affords, or this focal length affords that kind of storytelling. And again, photographing friends or kids, um, commercial work. This is the largest chocolate wall. It's like running, dripping chocolate in North America. And um, there's like a glass wall, so you can't walk up to it. But because I was doing photography there, I was like, I brought someone up to the wall. It was so cool. It felt like um, Willy Wonka or something. But, um, and then, other commercial stuff, um, studio work. This is a great, great, great studio lens. 
And I love the feeling of these. Again, think back to those adjectives that I was talking about, authentic, kind, warm, natural, um, different studio environments. This is natural light studio now. The others were obviously using light and just allowing to make these connections and to do so with kind of an inobtrusive lens. Um, Olympic medalist on the left, yoga teacher on the right, um, out on a boat, New York in the background. This is a street portrait of an amazing photographer, local New Yorker. There's this tunnel with all these lights in it and um, captured a neat moment of him. So street photography, but I always like portraits. So my street photography ends up looking like that. Um, portrait of a friend. And I'm just gonna do a few more images and then we're gonna talk, but you're getting the feel for what this allows us to do um, is to have these these different looks and to capture this stuff in some really unique ways. Let me um, stop sharing my screen and we can go back to talking. I have more images to show. What I wanna show image wise is I have these galleries that I send to clients. I wanna show a few of those um, just to kind of show it without like just the one select, but to see like, what does a whole shoot look like? But we'll, so we'll do that in a second. So based on that, Derek, you're always so good at finding these little insights or ideas um, from what I'm saying. What's coming in for you? I was thinking about how you're like, you know, I'm not just going to show images. I'm going to talk about what. And after looking at the images, you could have just showed images. I could have. I could have. And it, no, but I think that's, <laughs> that, that's the power of great images is. Think about all, like, think about how often, you know, we're marketed. Everything is being marketed to us. Yeah. I looked out the window today. So I, I live right off the Deegan. So I just highway traffic all day long. And it's, you see trucks drive by and it's like, they have ads on them for that very reason. And it's like, they're obviously trying to market something to us. Right. Is it true? No, it's marketing, you know, marketing language. Right. Images don't lie. You can say, and, and not to discredit anything you've said in the past 28 yeah. minutes, it's yeah. all true and it's all relevant. But the images, when you look at the images, if, I'm, if I want to see what makes this lens this lens, what makes it so valuable for you, the answer is in a slideshow of what you are able to do with it. And your work, your work is magic. The 85, you, you call the 85 magic? Yeah, your yeah, work yeah. is magic. It <laughs> always has this look to it, this polished commercial magazine feel to it that is so hard to accomplish. Like you, you could take a scene that I would photograph the same way and something would be missing. There's just something that you put in it, some... There's just some quality where I know I know it when I see it. I don't know what it is. I haven't figured it. I haven't figured out the secret <laughs> sauce. But um, so all that just to say, I mean, you you utilize this like a tool so well, and I think that's the important thing. Is it really doesn't matter. We we talk about gear all the time, and it's like the does gear matter? Does gear not matter? Well, yeah, it matters out of one side of the mouth, but then out of the other side of the mouth, it doesn't matter. You make this particular focal length works so well. And I think showing that balance between tight up, further off, environmental, commercial, all the different uses, everything you just said backed all that up completely. But the images for me just speak so loud to what you can do with it. Was that, was that good? Was that a good enough? Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, no, of... I mean, and that, I think that that's helpful too, because part of it, you know, all these things that we do, Derek, obviously we, we love to educate. They're not about us, but they're about helping other people enjoy this the way that we enjoy it and, and catch the passion and magic and all of that. And that with, with lenses and stuff that what tends to happen with marketing and marketing's great, but they like tend to focus on like, the like zero in on something right here. And this is cool. And this is cool. And the size is cool. And it's this many ounces is cool. And this, this many aperture rings cool and all this stuff, you know, and then, and the reviews kind of play to that too, because it is like a technological marvel, <laughs> you know, yeah. like camera gear is unbelievably good right now. Like the stuff that's coming out is just so, so good. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I, I, 
you know, search for analogies, but it's almost like instruments. It's like you, you buy a guitar now, it's like good. Like they figured out guitar building, you know, and it used to be, let's say when I was a kid, if you bought a guitar, at like Toys R Us, if you remember that store, <laughs> yeah. it was not a good guitar. Like just don't <laughs> buy one from there. Right? 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 <laughs> but now, you know, and, 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 but now it's almost like we're getting a little bit too much in like, it's almost like, yes, this guitar has wood grain that's like three millimeters, like between the grain structure, it, it you know, and in nano particle, and you're like, okay, great, but can you make music, right? And so that's what, yeah. and, and so we as photographers love gear. I love gear. I mean, it's so exciting. It's fun. It's interesting newness. But what I want to say is like, not to forget the music, right? To, to not just become so gear heady even with like, that's why I'm trying to branch this past like this particular lens. Because if I drop my can lens camera in the, the water and someone else, I had to go borrow someone's, I borrowed yours and it wasn't the same. I wouldn't care as long as I knew it was in my focal length, I, I could make my music. And that's really the trick in photography is finding gear and lenses in particular that fit who you are and the music you wanna make. I'm just going to play with this guitar thing for a little bit. Maybe you want an electric guitar that has fire, fire on it because you, that's the kind of music you want to make. Great. Maybe it's a ukulele that has really natural finish. Great. And I'm going to equate that, you know, different lenses, electric guitars, like a 70 to 200 ukuleles, maybe more like a 50 or 35 or something, you know, it doesn't have the same like volume. You have to work harder with, certain lenses than others like electric guitar you just like play it out like one of my friends told me first time about a 7200 he said chris you could just photograph someone in a parking lot and it would look amazing like and i tried that i went out in the parking lot and i was like oh you're right and it's like a you just play a g major chord and electric guitar with distortion and it's like you feel like a rock star right but these other lenses they invite you to work or at least me that's kind of the thing the, the, the ones I like, but for all of us, it's finding ways to listen to the marketing to your point, but then to not forget the imagery and to search out those photographers that we love and kind of, and not to like, like say, well, they shoot with this lens I want to, but, but also maybe to try that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's what I did. Right. That's like Annie Leibovitz. I was like, wow, she's doing this focal length. I kind of wrote it off as like standard workhorse. I was like, mm. I don't want to be, that's standard. A great, I want to be, cool. I want to be like, I want to be like, you know, like the, the sexy primes. I want to be like, I'm like elitist, you know, or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, Ooh, wait a second. Maybe it's actually more powerful to make great music with something that is standard. And, and I would even then apply that to the primes too. You can't let, you can't, if, you, if we fall trapped into thinking the prime is gonna make the image, it won't. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like buy a new prime lens or something, I take a picture, it's bad. I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> I spent all this money. <laughs> it's supposed to be better. Do you, yeah. do you think there's something to be said for the fact that across most of the range, yeah, you're not, you're, you have to be more intentional with the way you're photographing when you're photographing with a wider, like the, the standard 24 yeah, to yeah. 70, the yeah. 85, you know, the 85, you have compression. Yeah. You're not getting, you photograph me with the 85, this, this wall is completely out. There's yeah. more, it's, it's harder in a sense because you have more distract. You have to worry about bokeh and out of focus things distracting. But I feel like, one of the one of the things that one of the qualities that makes this so in your wheelhouse is you work with the environment you have very well you yes. work you see scenes you play with what you have around you so well that this this focal length is a natural fit for you because everything for you is intentional with the way it's lined up and with incorporating your surroundings which you can't do that with if you go too wide you can't do it and if you go too compressed you can't do it because then you know it's it's almost like it's working with a richer depth of field inherently that forces you to be more intentional it forces you to pay more attention to composition it forces you to really look at how you have things images stacked and layered what's in the foreground what's in the background right 
And even for me, it, it invites me to be kind of calm and present. I like how you said that. What I mean by that, if I should put a 16 millimeter lens on and I did the same photo of my backyard, I would just be like, wow, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that, you know, branches bending or buildings or, you know, there's a big wow. Same thing, the 85. I mean, I, and I love the 85. We'll t- I'll t- do another <laughs> webinar on that. But the, the wow isn't as much there. It's like, huh, what is here? And then how does my camera height affect this? Like, cause for me, the wider we go, the more camera height and, and, and camera distance from subject really matters. And so I, I have, I'm like, I can't just be like, oh, it's better. I'm like, okay, I'm going wider. Now, maybe I need to take a knee, you know, like maybe the woman on the bench, I need to lower down so her head was above the horizon. I need to kind of find the right spacing, looking into the right space. So it allows me to slow down and to really be present. And what I think is like, I love artisan craftspeople. So like ceramicists, painters, woodworkers, And I think I try to bring some of that into my photography because what they do is they're like, they're not just like, I, maybe some are, but (laughs) the most, let's, let's let's go to woodworkers. You know, (laughs) I, I I photographed this one woodworker, you know, and he does carving. So he's just like, it's like, he's very thoughtful with his carving. He's not just like slapping, you know, and wow, big, bold moves. It's like, so yes. So I think to your answer for me, it's fitting. And I think that's a good segue. Let me, share my screen yeah go for it go for it i'm really interested to see this and i think this is such yeah okay um and i do i have one tab here i do provide coaching if people on my website if anyone's interested um i just have had kind of three people finish my coaching program so if you i have some space for that um and it's one-on-one so if you want to learn how to do um if any of this is resonating um I work with people one-on-one to help them become more creative, capture better photos. Okay, so this is a set of photos from Ghirardelli. Um, maybe I'll just click into one of them, but you you get a, a sense. Um, I'll scroll through most of these, but you get a sense where I'm just like trying to figure out kind of the scene and how does the subject fit into the scene. And none of these necessarily are, are going to be like the A-plus photos that I show in my presentation. But I'm just going to scroll a little bit through how you can see that I'm working with families eating ice cream. Um, there's a lot of ice cream that <laughs> was ate on the shoot. And let me just go down. Um, people servers. This is Miss California. Um, and I'm just going to go way down. I know this is this is this is almost probably blurry looking, um, but I want to try to get to. I'm going to go way down, way down, way down to the shoot. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's just go to, again, I have no idea if the client uses or any of these photos, but like, this is like people like kids getting ice cream um, and trying to show the the enjoyment of it. Um, I want to go down to the end. This is kind of some retail stuff. Um, more, more kids showing, interacting with the products. You get the idea. Just like, to, to me, this is, a lot of commercial um, photography for shoots, what I'm doing is I am capturing so many different moments and delivering the client a wide range of moments. And then out of, let's say there's 700 images, they're going to maybe use 30 and they're going to use them all over the place like mad. And so my job with this kind of a lens is to really give them variety. I'm going to go to a different one. This is a different client shoot. This is for a jewelry company. But in this case, you can see um, I'm going to give stuff where I'm kind of showing the, the, the subject with, um, you can't see it maybe because it's on Zoom, it's small, but with the jewelry that she's wearing up in the mountains. And then I might also, because I always like doing up close stuff, maybe I'll do an up close portrait like this. So that's one client. This is different client. So this is engagement photos. And Derek, tell me if I'm going kind of too fast, too slow, but, um, okay. But this guy, he's a firefighter and he loves his truck. And so I was like, I gotta get a picture of you guys with your truck. And he's like, Oh yeah. And, and often I take pictures like this because you find what someone's interested in, you photograph them with it to build a connection. 
are they going to use the picture with a truck on to send out? No, but I mean, he's going to love this. And so now he has buy-in. And so now I can ask him to do more goofy stuff, like go walk in the, the flower field. And, um, you know, I can take some photos of them standing there together, excited to, to get married. Um, I can do my up close portraiture and I'll just keep scrolling here to kind of give you a sense. But this is a lot of like what I'm delivering clients. So we kind of saw one, which was, uh, commercial. Now we're seeing one that is a couple and we're, and I'm shooting the whole thing with one lens and I'll just keep scrolling here to get to just maybe a couple more photos. I loved, um, I love this moment where I, they were wanted to do stuff with surfboards, they're surfers walking across the street. So it's a kind of more lifestyle. And then there's this neat wall and let me just see if there's any fun ones. Well, you get the idea, like kind of more iconic at a distance kind of photos. So this is obviously at 24, right? And then some of the other ones, oh, these were fun too with the, with the um, palm tree. But some of the other ones are gonna be more up close. So this one, I'm probably, it's probably at 70, right? And I'm capturing a little bit more of their personality. Let's go to another one. Um, this is an artist who makes sculptures out of skateboards. So I have um, some stuff with her in her workshop um her with her art and then we saw one of these there's one that i kind of like this one i like her vibe in it um and just her in front of a white wall so again range let's do one more this is for a local yoga studio and they need some photos for um their teachers that are doing a teacher training class and so i'm capturing images of the group and I'm kind of working at different distances. This is my daughter, Annie, that we saw earlier. And I showed a few of those pictures, but wanting to scroll through the whole shoot, basically I was like, Annie, we got to go take pictures. <laughs> and so we went down 20 minutes. We take all these pictures. We're just goofing around. We have her skateboarding. We have her standing, sitting. There was that up close one we saw, which will kind of be up here somewhere. Um, or maybe, I, oh yeah, I think it was that one where it's a nice up close picture of her eyes, but also just some of her down at our local beach that our family goes to all the time. Two more galleries and then we'll talk. But this is um, when I talked about kind of band photos. Um, this is one they've used a lot. Um, and this one, I'm getting more depth of field by having the guys stand further away than the lead singer. Um, capturing images of them on location. And I'm obviously processing these to try to match and fit their style. So I just wanna show kind of that style, but then also they've used this photo a ton um, down on the beach kind of silhouette and sometimes less is more with bands. You don't wanna, you kind of wanna know who it is, but not totally. So this lens gives me that. And then last little one, in this case, I wanted to show this one because they redesigned the store. Gary Daly is one of my big clients. And so I took an architectural kind of shot for them and some others, which showed, showed the, the store um, to give a sense. They have this G from the original sign. And then um, to give, uh, let me just see where it is, to kind of get the full G in it standing on the stairs. So it gives me wide enough. This is really hard to do. Like you couldn't do this with a mobile phone. I guess, unless you went to like a 0.5, but this gives the full thing there. And, and just some of those elements, but also some little moments in the store and people enjoying it. So jumping back through this, like why the heck am I showing all these? One is we saw a big like full day commercial shoot with a lot of different things. Another one, we saw a smaller client jewelry and looking at different um, outdoor on location stuff our um, engaged couple out on location, our artist in her studio, um, yoga teachers in studio, my daughter, a band, and allowing us to really create so many different moods. And so I'll stop sharing there, but I just kind of wanted to show a, a free for all quick skim of things because 
Well, there's two reasons. One is I've started to do this more at my workshops and I realize people really appreciate it when they get to see not just the hero images <laughs> and see, see that there's all the kind of like, there's a lot of work to get there, right? And then what I do with my clients is I show more than necessary to give them the ability to select and they tend to really like that. I also will share with them a smaller gallery. But so I kind of wanted to pull back the curtain a little bit and sh share that with, with, with everyone watching to show that this lens isn't just a singular lens where you're like, oh, one and done. But you can really work these different scenes. Like with the band, if, if we went back to it, we would see like, oh, I was working these old greenhouses and I was doing this and then I did up close individuals of each of them and then I had them walk to the beach and then we did some train track stuff and then we did some beach and then we did some sunburst and you know, then we did some more, I went on the other side of them. But this, all I have is like one camera and a lens. And sometimes when I do my, my work, people are like is that all you have and I have a big backpack with all the rest of the gear but I'm like yeah that's all we need <laughs> <laughs> and uh wanted to wanted to show that you're not human man I'm looking at these images that are supposed to be like your outtakes and they're better than my, fi <laughs> my final images um I, is it true for you that I you know because you, again you've you've talked about it earlier how everyone go gravitates towards primes and it's like all right well when you start photography you start on zooms because you yeah. normally start on a kit lens but yes, then yes. professional photographers only use primes and that's what you're yeah. kind of pumped into your head and it's what you're fed and then you hit a certain point where it's like you you want to get back to the process of creating and what makes it easy to create is versatility again yeah but also ease not having to change bodies not having to change lenses I think every time I've done a shoot where I bring multiple bodies and I spend too much time changing lenses, yeah, I don't allow myself enough time. You have to build chemistry with every subject. Right. You also have to build chemistry with every setup you have with that subject. You have to allow yourself to see. And that's what I, th what I think was so useful for me to look through your process. It was way more about the the images leading up to the final image than it was about the final image and to see how you work and how you maneuver. Yes. So does that ring true for you, especially in regards to using this lens that it allows you to stay in the zone and rather than changing a lens, you can just, okay, I could just adjust in a little bit. Cause at a certain point you have to throw away, we'll move your feet. And no, well, that's not always true. That changes your position. That changes everything. Sometimes it is better to just be able to, have the versatility rather than being locked into one mindset of one focal length. Yeah. Well, and where I'll pick up on that, and I'm curious if this resonates with you is I do, I have a big peak design backpack and it's pretty loaded. You know, I like, let's say that one shoot out the commercial shoot I was showing it's, I have three bodies. I probably have six lenses. And then I also have a bag with lighting gear and modifier. So I have a lot of gear available to me, so to speak on a shoot like that, you know, like I have like a whole camera store with me, <laughs> <laughs> but what I learned from doing workshops and also teaching at a college level is that I would see my workshop attendees who have a lot of gear and they would, they would create worse work because they were always thinking like, well, maybe I should change or what if I do that? Or if only I use this lens, you know, cause they kind of could do that. They would. And this will be a little goofy analogy, but I lived in Spain for a year of my life, which was amazing. And I remember coming back after living there and I went into a grocery store down the bread aisle. And in Spain, the little market where I lived, um, it had like one kind of bread. <laughs> you know, you go and pick your bread. And I remember coming back to the States and I was like, oh my gosh, there are 40 kinds of bread. Like, I didn't even know what kind of bread I should choose. I didn't even know I could choose as many kinds of bread. You know, I was like this one or that one. I took all this time, you know, and like, and, and I guess what I, you know, I'm playing with this comparison here a little bit that regardless of what gear we have or how we shoot, I think really settling into what we have in the moment, which is what I was hearing you say, like, yeah, maybe move your feet, maybe not, maybe zoom in, maybe not, but flow, connect and not have this, this feeling like, um, 
you know, I, I, well, oh my gosh, I should go change this. Cause, and I've done that. I'm like, I should do the 16. And then I put the 16 on. I'm like, oh no, I should do the 70, 20. Oh no, I shouldn't do that. Yeah. And, then I, and I'm like, ah, and then there, meanwhile, my subjects, I do a lot of people work. My subjects like just bored out of their mind. Yeah. Right? They're yeah. cooling down. They're, they're cooling down. Yeah. They're coming out of their zone. It's different if you're out on the street, like, yeah, I'm out on the street and I see something. Wow. I'm seeing silhouettes cross the avenues. Yeah. 30 blocks down. And I'm like, Ooh, I'd be really cool to photograph this from like 300 millimeters. Right. It's different. It's, there's no, the moment's not going to change the whole energy, the connection, right. the vibe of the moment isn't going to change, but you hit a great point there. All this, you're getting yourself out of the zone. You're getting your subject. They're just sitting there. You spend all this time building comfort and developing a flow. And I think that's, that's what we're getting to with yeah. having that, that, versatility it's really about having a range without having to switch gear because they're all you know again people will say well just have a second body sometimes one body it's the small little nuances that are the difference between really staying in the moment because even going to another body it's like it's not you know your setting you might have to adjust your settings or any it's really just yeah. easier to be there and zoom and do a little bit of that than change your whole change the whole flow of I like that word flow you used because that yeah. really is what yeah. happens. Yeah. And in commercial setting, you're really, there's a, like, let's say some of those shoots, maybe there's 30 or 40 people on set and I have someone helping with lights and let's say with the ice cream, they on, they're only photo photographable for a few minutes because then they melt and they have to swap mm -hmm. out a new one. So there's just like a lot of moving parts and the weather's changing, the lights coming through the window or it's not or whatever. And so I think part of our job as photographers is is to kind of be this like this this even keel in a way, at least for me. Um, mm -hmm. Like, let's say there's one photo I really like this couple, and they're eating ice cream, and it's backlit, and it's in San Francisco, and I feel like it, it captured the feeling we were trying to achieve, and. Um, they weren't feeling anything. They were just like, okay, we'll do another one. Seriously, I have to do another Sunday. I'm like, so I have to like create this moment. I have to help them create it. Or same thing, the engaged couple, you know, they're like, pull up in the truck. Can I get a photo with the truck? And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, this will be amazing. You know, and, the guy, and then the guy's like, and I'm asking him about his truck and the size of his tires and the rack he had, you know, and he's like, so our job is to kind of create this moment and this magic or the family same kind of thing. I'm like, I'm going to go walk away. You guys sit here, enjoy each other. And I step back, go to 24. I get the whole scene. Cause I knew that cause they came from Switzerland. I knew we needed some California golden Hills and Oak trees. And we needed some of that, not just up close, like where are, where in the world are you? So my job's that then when I come close, then I'm trying to create the moment. But if I'm setting my camera bag down, opening, swapping, changing the little, kid alina she's just crying or something by that point <laughs> um so yeah flow is really important and focal lengths that allow us to get in the flow so i think what i try to do with my students and workshops and things is not say you need to buy this lens or that because there's no right answer right we're all different it's like musical instruments but we do need to connect to our gear and the mistake is to buy too many lenses too quickly and then we don't really understand them. And we have this whole suite of lenses, but we don't really intimately know them. And I don't mean intimately know them like the gear things, how sharp it is, the focus hold button, blah, 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 all that stuff. But I mean, like, what's the feeling of 24? Like even here, it would be interesting. I like this. 24 is like right here. Well, you did it for us actually. And then you went here, this was 70. So what's this feeling? Because, because uh, you know, every lens has an angle of view, which allows us to see a certain part of the world. 16 is like this, you know, you could, it's like a 180 degree view. Um, and then also, what's the feeling of it from my distance of my subject, my camera height? Um, how close can I get? Where does this lens fall apart? Um, for example, I showed with the oak trees in the backyard. It, it's just not wide enough in this kind of a scene. Um, so maybe it's falling apart there. Or if I have a group photo, let's say it's a wedding party, it's 10 or 15 people, I can shoot that at 24. 
But then I'll do these photos at weddings where they have everybody. It's like 70 people or something, you know, it's all the families flown overseas. I don't know how many people it's like, you know, and like, I've done those photos. I've been that guy, like I stand on a ladder and like take them. Like you can't do that at 24. (laughs) You could get half the group, but just really starting to know that so that when I'm fumbling for the lens, I'm not like, I have no question like, oh, this size group, ah, this is a good focal length or, oh, I want to do my up close kind of portraiture this is the thing or remember there was a guy with a really cool eyes i want to do an up close portrait an open shade in front of the concrete wall then up on top of the wall before i even talk to him i put on the lens knowing i'm going to do two things and not doing one fumbling doing another right um so having that intimate knowledge of, of it and also knowing energetically what these focal lengths afford us to do um meaning for me it's natural authentic it's kind it's curious there's nothing like if we look think back of all the images we saw today there's nothing like apart from that one wedding photo that one i think is actually a really good like mic drop photo but there's nothing jaw-droppingly like oh my gosh like this photographically this is this is the you know like a and I say it's all positive, you know, I think my work's great, but it's not like this is the award-winning photo of the year or something, but they're all really strong. And so it allows you this breadth and depth of it, um, of strength. So, man, I talk sometimes, feel like I talk too much, but wow, <laughs> I get excited listen. about it. I tell you every time you come on, it's like, I look forward to these. It always comes at the right time. I'm like, it's yeah. a Monday. It's a Monday of all Mondays. <laughs> so I'm like, this is like, this is perfect. We couldn't have scripted this any better. And that's what we're here for, man. We're here yeah. to hear, you know, I think the in very much the same way as we're talking about the lenses and, and how we talk about gear, it's you, your experience is what makes this lens special. It's what yeah. you do with it, but it's also your outlook. And I think that's where we get away from the technical aspect this is where we get away from the marketing images is where we get into the your approach how many people can sit here and listen to these and they don't even have to tune in watch they can listen have it on in the background treat it like a podcast and just hearing your approach to photography and the way that you address things probably provides just as many people help as the people who are watching and looking at the images. And I think that's what's so important is your words and your experience and your approach to photography. I think people underestimate approach. We focus so much on a style, but I think the approach is a lot of what makes the the style what it is. I think that's, yeah, the approach, the process. And, And maybe to that point, there's a new Sony lens, a 24 to 50. I think that's what it is. I do not have it yet. It hasn't come out. But that lens pairs very well with a smaller camera body, I, the Sony A7C. So where I'm going back to what made you, that made me think of with process, that I'm, I'm almost certain that lens is going to be glued onto my smaller camera body. And the reason I mentioned that is I have some people I coach who are older, who the weight of their camera really matters. And so them finding the right camera body size and lens combo is really important. So while this, and you're so good at drawing all these things out, and that's what I think the value of this is this conversation we're having, but is finding what's right for us at our stage in life. So for example, I'm just gonna exaggerate, but I showed one photo, I think I had a 600 millimeter lens on and I'm standing on a wall in one of my photos when I was going through showing stuff of myself that lens is right for the certain kind of person one who can handle a lens that big right (laughs) i don't own that lens but i was using i was like wow this is a beast and you can only shoot with it for so long you know i mean and so but yet if someone's older like i have one coaching client who is going on a safari to you know safari in africa and so it was like she really wanted to think about, I don't want a lens and gear that's so heavy that I'm going to be so tired and my wrist is going to hurt so bad that I'm not going to actually enjoy photography. So we kind of found a way to match make her with the right gear, focal length, the camera body. And so I think all these conversations and hearing other people talk, the takeaway should always be, okay, that's them. Great. What about me? 
And that's what I hope kind of our listening audience really is tuning into is we don't need another person to photograph someone eating an ice cream sundae that's been done <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but what we need are people who have tapped into who they are. They're paying attention to the marketing because it's exciting, all the technical qualities, because it's really important, but then kind of ask like, what music do I want to make? What's, what's the song I want to sing? And then how does in, in this conversation, how does focal length afford different ways to do that? And to think about it with our own subject matter and our own things of interest. And by doing that, that's where, at least with my students, I've seen them just like fireworks, you know, they just, they like, they just skyrocket with their success where they fail is when they buy a really expensive lens and they're just shooting stupid stuff with it. And I'm like, okay, you're like reliant. You think that because the lens was expensive, because it's top of the line, because it has all these reviews, you're going to get good photography. You're not going to get good photography. You have to photograph something that matters to you. You have to have a voice. You have to have a vision. You have to have that flow. You have to have that connection. And you have to bring this lens into that world. You know, like maybe, because I mentioned puppies, Derek. We have 10 puppies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do we do this whole hour without yeah, talking yeah. about puppies? I know, I know, I know. I, should, I, I did a Zoom the other day where in front of all the puppies. It was really fun, but also really distracting. But <laughs> With puppies, it's like bringing a puppy home and integrating it into your life. I'm just going to play, you know, so it's, it's like, this is fun, magical thing. But when the family's going to adopt these puppies from us, they really have to figure out how does it fit into their life? Are they a, a water family? Do they go to the beach a lot. Do they go hiking a lot or whatever it is? The puppy is the puppy. It's itself, but the integration is the important thing. And so I think that is too often overlooked in gear conversations and really tuning into that from a focal length perspective, not from, you know, the cost or all those things, but just focal length, just purely angle of view. What can you do with it? Are you a storyteller? What kind of storyteller are you? Where I have some colleagues who are like, well, I only like, let's say stories where it's really up close. They love macro stuff. You know, I'm like, okay, great. This lens, you don't need that lens. You know, if you're just a macro photographer um, or if they like, um, you know, like the more 16 to 35 or those all twide 12 millimeter lens, really ultra wide, um, then, okay. Yeah. Maybe you go there. Every time we have a conversation, it's like, there's so many things I'm over here. I'm like, all right, we got to bring this up next time. I could have gone another hour on this. I could have yeah, yeah. gone on a tangent here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So much. I will say to everybody out there, we have some stuff. We're working on getting some yes. stuff up on the website. We do have some some more stuff with, with Chris planned coming up. I know it's been a while. We missed having him on the platform here, but we have some some more stuff. I'm working on getting it up on the website. Uh, so if you do want to get more of uh, Chris's take on photography, life, zen, everything in general, portraits, uh, head over to our YouTube page. Just look up the B&H event space. We have plenty of Chris Orwig on there. But Chris, always great to have you on, man. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And, and one of the ones that coming up too will be more conversational. So we'll get some more. If you have questions and you want to interact, we can do that. Some of our times I, we do a little more presentational like this. Other ones a little more conversational. And give us feedback. Let us know what you want. Um, we're really here to serve you and I think Derek and I both really feel so many people have helped us in our photo journeys. Um, it's a fun way to continue, you know, to kind of give back and learn and grow and be in this together. So this is so great, Derek. I appreciate the time. And um, it was really fun for me to reflect on my focal lengths that I use and to, su to surprise myself, I would go through my Lightroom catalogs and I would filter by a certain thing. I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I didn't, I didn't realize how much I use this. And that's where the title came from. And maybe one of the takeaways is just to look at your own work, you know, and look at like, okay, yeah, what, what am I using and not using? Um, and, and sometimes that can, I don't know, bring some highlight, some awareness or some insight. So. Totally. He had an 85 millimeter presentation planned and he had to change it at the last minute when yeah, he, yeah. Ran his, <laughs> when he ran his catalog. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I was oh. like, oh my gosh, you know, oh, <laughs> so fun. I love it, man. Chris, always great to have you on. Such great vibes. A huge thank you, of course, to Sony for hosting yes. this event and to all of our viewers out there tuning in. Again, we love to see the interaction. So we'll have some more interaction with, for you guys coming. 
Uh, and hope we do hope you get involved. But that is all we have for now. Another edition of the B&H Event Space now in the books. Catch you all next time.